Mayor Keith Summey, businessman John Singletary, and community activist Thomas Dixon are running for mayor of North Charleston. And now, Ashley Peel is the fourth person. I sit down one-on-one -on -one with the businesswoman and lifelong North Charleston resident for a special edition of Quintus Close-Ups. And be sure to download the free Quintus Close-Up app in your Apple or Google Play stores. And listen to this interview later on iHeartRadio. Ashley Peel. It is so good to meet you. Thanks. Great to meet you finally. <laughs> Likewise. Yeah. I know that we have been communicating a lot because obviously you're now an official candidate for North Charleston Mayor. I am. Very exciting. And I know that on your website you said passion, energy, and integrity. Mm -hmm. You said this too, a homegrown leader for a safer, greener, more prosperous North Charleston. Who else is Ashley Peel these days? Well, these, these days I also feel is, is a lot of things, especially with this run for um, for mayor. But, you know, at the core, I'm still who I've always been, you know, a, a resident of North Charleston. Now I was born here and I grew up here and lived here my whole life. Um, and I have a story that's probably similar to a lot of folks in North Charleston. You know, I, I grew up poor um, in a trailer park with, you know, nine folks in a two-bedroom trailer and kind of pushing yourself to get out of those conditions, which are a reality for a lot of folks today. But... Um, pushing yourself through the public school system, going off to college, being the first in your family to get a college degree and come back. And now being on the other side of all of that, you know, having made it out of those conditions and now on the working side, sure. and I'm a leader in my, um, in my organization, we're a small tech company. So wearing a lot of hats these days, but very excited to be um, taking the plunge into, into politics for the first time. For the first time. You all said this, well, then I'm going to go back to the website. You say passion, energy, and integrity. Where did you get your passion to run for North Charleston Mayor, and how much energy do you have for this? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I'm, I'm passionate about North Charleston. Like I said, I've been here my whole life. Um, you know, my, my perspective is shaped by my growing up here. Um, and now, like I said, being a, a little bit on the other side of that, I'm very passionate about where the city's going. Um, so I can see the growth that we've had in the last 10 to 20 years. I see the growth that we're projected to have in the next 10 to 20 years. And a lot of that passion just comes from um, wanting to be engaged in that, wanting to make sure that we have good representation for uh, the folks whose voices aren't often heard when you're making plans for, you know, how the city's going to grow. Um, so I'm very passionate about getting people a seat at the table when we're having those conversations. And I, you know, the, the youthful aspect of this, I have a lot of energy. I, I do a lot of things. I mentioned I wear a lot of hats. Right. So, and being a first time political candidate, you know, I've, Never thought I was going to be in politics. It was never something that I said, I w I'm going to set out and do this. Right. I just felt deeply about my community and where the community was going. And I wanted to participate in any ways that I could. And so this is, a, this is all new for me, but um, I'm excited. That excitement is energizing me, getting out there, talking to the, the community. That's energizing me. So sort of building on everybody else's energy as well, which is really helpful. You talk about wanting to get out there and help, uh, talk with citizens of this particular city. Have you talked to them thus far about your particular run? Yeah, yeah. So that's been, um, you know, I, even though I just recently announced that I'm running for, for mayor, this has been a decision years in the making. So sort of two years ago, um, kind of deciding that I have some abilities I can probably give back in, in different ways and deciding I wanted to get engaged at my city level uh, and kind of figuring out how I wanted to do that. But it all started with getting engaged with the community and leaders in the community, people from different backgrounds and people that represent different areas of interest. So um, your arts communities, your, your local business leaders, your nonprofits, sure. some political leaders. And I've been inspired by, you know, this past midterms, folks like uh, Marvin Pindarvis oh, yes. and, and him running. And so getting their, their perspectives, you know, you know, jumping into politics and what the campaign life is like. But that's been a really exciting part of this so far is getting to touch base with a lot of different folks in the community, get different perspectives, and really hear their excitement and their enthusiasm about uh, a new option for, for you know, a new candidate for mayor of North Charleston. And let me get back to North Charleston. You just touched on it just recently, but you talked about you growing up here. And I know that you say that you, your, your mom was a single mother of five, mm -hmm. doing her best to raise us right and keeping food on the table. And like you mentioned, you didn't have much, but you had strong values. Mm -hmm. And you still hold those values to today. Work hard, treat people with respect. Be honest and hold true to your word and support your fellow man when in need. Yeah. How do you hope to work hard, treat people with respect, be honest, and also hold true to your word when running for mayor and if you do become mayor? Yeah. Well, a lot of folks are disillusioned, I think, with poli politics. And I know that I was. It's, you know, we need less politicians 
And we need more just normal members of the community. We need people with morals and ethics and people with good attitudes and good judgment um, who aren't working for special interests or for money that are really working for their community. And, you know, so growing up in my experiences is sort of a, a good perspective. You know, you, you don't have a lot of money. You're out there, you're working hard because if you don't work hard, you're not you're not getting out of those conditions. And I knew early on that I didn't want to be a product of my environment. Right. I wanted to, to work hard and do something with my life make my family proud. And that, those things I still hold true today. It's, you know, I've always been a very hard worker, um, wanting to make progress and never accepting the, the status quo. And I think that those are things that we need in our politicians as well. So, you know, I hope to bring a lot of that to um, the position of mayor. And, and with that, like I said, bring people to the table. You know, a lot of people feel like their voices aren't being heard right now. And, really want to try and amplify those voices because I can relate a little bit to that uh, with my upbringing and want to make sure that people feel like their voices are being heard, that they have a seat at the table where decisions are being made because these decisions largely impact uh, everybody and we need everybody to have a voice in where the city's going. Who would you bring to the table if you become mayor? Yeah, I mean, uh, small business owners are so important to what we're doing in North Charleston. Okay. We need to make sure that as we're growing, you know, we're really supporting our small businesses. Um, so our small businesses are really a catalyst for our diversity as well. Um, so, you know, we don't want to edge any any of our small businesses out. Um, and our minority groups who have felt, you know, definitely unheard with the current administration, um, making sure that they have a voice. Uh, and our young people um, who feel so disconnected from politics, you know, it's sort of, you have to be a lawyer to be a politician, or you have to be old and rich to be a politician. Um, and so I don't think we're getting enough engagement from our young people, but hopefully bringing some of those folks to the table and making North Charleston a place where young, old, white, black, everyone's voice is being heard and, and we're taking into account all of those um, opinions and all of those perspectives when we're setting out the vision for the city. And you obviously touched on growing up here in North Charleston. And I know on your website, you said this quote, those values help push me to the North Charleston school system, Pepper Hill Elementary, Alice Bernie Middle, then Stahl High School, yeah. and ultimately to Clemson University, where I graduated in the top of my class, making the first in my family to get a high school diploma, the first to go to college, and the first to get a college degree. Yeah. You talk about Pepper Hill, Alice Bernie, Stahl High School. What is the state of education in North Charleston in your mind? Well, I think the Post and Courier's done a good job of highlighting where we are with our with our education. Um, look, it was it's a hard thing growing up poor and um, you know going to the public school system with an environment that's not necessarily saying go out and go finish school. It's really get a job and feel how you can contribute to the household, right? Because you got bills to pay, and it's really everybody contributing to make sure that those bills are paid. And it's a hard thing to do, and it's not my experience is not a unique one. Um, a lot of folks in North Charleston are living that today, um, and it's a it's a tough thing, you know. So the the school system it's very important, but I think that a lot of families um, feel like it's hard to prioritize going to college when you have to contribute to the household. Um, it's hard to get out of the the school system when you're you know don't have enough activities after school to keep you engaged if you're a young person, you know, you kind of getting into getting into trouble. Um, so there, there are improvements that we need to make with our education system for sure. I think uh, the Post and Courier has done a good job of highlighting some of those and I think, I hope that the, at the state level we're taking into account um, that we really need to put a focus on this and that that's going to trickle down to you know, our county school board as well. You mentioned this earlier, but you also said this too. Obviously, but about North Charleston. North Charleston is set to experience explosive growth over the next year, mm -hmm. and it needs a leader with energy, passion, and integrity to manage that growth responsibly and sustainability. Sustainably, my moral compass has always been pointed due north, and I'll be a reliable, ethical leader that is, this city can actually count on. I'll work tirelessly for my city and the people. And you just mentioned this, not the special interests. Mm -hmm. Can I stop there? Yeah. What are the special interests in North Charleston when you think of politics? I, I think most people are disillusioned by politics that they feel like um, politics don't represent the common person anymore. Um, and people lose hope in the system that their voice isn't going to get heard. You know, that change is going to come from those who are in positions of power or with enough money to affect that change. Um, and I really want to change that dynamic because I think politics should be representative of the people. I mean, we as politicians, you are servants to the public, 
and we need to embrace that a little bit more um, and make sure that the public is being heard and that you don't have to be rich to have a say in what the city's vision is. You don't have to be in a position of power. Um, you don't have to be any of those things to run for office um, and encouraging some of that from the community. So it's, it's really the people of this city are who the government should represent, uh, even at our local level here. And obviously, let's stay on the growth side because obviously North Charleston's population is always a talk around town. As we sit here right now, what is that population in your mind? The population of North Charleston is growing. Um, we're, we're diverse. Um, I, I love our diversity. We have great character here in North Charleston. Um, those things are in a precarious situation right now. I mean, depending on how we grow our city, uh, those things um, have downstream impacts on the makeup of our community, what our residents look like, what our population looks like. We're a big city, too. You know, we're almost comparable to the city of Charleston in terms of population. Um, and we still kind of run with a little bit of a, uh, you know, like small government, if, if you will. But, you know, the, the population is growing, the city is growing, and we need to make sure that we have a little bit of a, a vision of how we want our city to grow so that we're really thinking our, of ourselves inclusively, um, that we're making sure that not just parts of the population are growing at the expense of others, but that we're all really con uh, benefiting from the growth that we're already experiencing. You talk about the city of Charleston. If you were to be elected mayor later this year, how would you work with Mayor John Tecklenburg of Charleston? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I like uh, Tecklenburg. I met with him uh, a few times. Um, he's got that energy, too, right? Um, and, and, I, and prior to him, um, Mayor Riley. And I, and I really look up to, to Riley because um, Mayor Riley had a vision for the city that was, um, like, give people things to do in the city. I, I think he had a quote that said, um, people won't remember your policies, but they will remember your parks. You know, so if you give people a place to go, a place to gather, um, and make sure that you're, you know, recognizing that your natural resources, your green spaces are really important, really good amenities, um, that, that you can turn those into city assets. Um, but, you know, back to Tecklenburg, he's he's new to his role-ish, you know, he's, he's running for, for re-election now, right. so he's had a term under his belt, but he's got a lot of great perspective. You know, um, it's it's hard to think about North Charleston as a singular entity. Um, we're so closely connected to the peninsula and to the city of Charleston right. as a whole. And I would love to, to work with um, Mayor Tecklenburg on, there are some things like connectivity, like you can't just think about connecting North Charleston to itself. You got to think about how do you connect North Charleston to other areas in the Tri-County, especially um, the peninsula where, uh, you know, that's where a lot of our tourism is, that's where a lot of our folks go to work. And so how do you make sure that you're connecting those two? You don't do that just singularly here at North Charleston, you do that with working with your counterparts. Describe to me the following one word, a green city in North Charleston. Preservation. I, I suppose I'd say preservation. Um, you know, we're bordered on two sides by two wonderful rivers, and, and we have one uh, main, you know, riverfront access for the public. And so, you know, when you think about a green city, you think about Make sure you have parks for young people uh, that they don't have to drive a car to get to. They can walk and they have somewhere that they can spend their time. Uh, but also amenities like uh, you know our waterfront access, where the public can enjoy some of those things. Um, and really, it's about, about preservation because those, as we all know, are some of the most desirable places to develop. And so, making those conscious decisions um, to preserve land for the public use, I think, is uh, is where where the green city comes in. Public transportation, in one word. Uh, public transportation, important. Uh, affordable housing. Affordable housing, in one word, complicated. Public safety. Crucial. Chief Reggie Burgess. Amazing. The Naval Hospital. Disappointment. The Food Desert. Also crucial. Mayor Keith Summey's recent state of the city address. Hopeful. When you pull off your political hat right now as a political candidate, who else is actually you? I think there's a lot of things. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a wife. Uh, my, my wife is a, um, you know, she, she works here in Park Circle oh, as, cool. as I do. Um, I'm a dog mom to my dog Cooper. Yes. You would have met him today, but um, I, I, sent, I sent him home a little early so he didn't make me. <laughs> The interview, but he'll be out there on the campaign trail oh, cool. with me. Uh, I'm an athlete. I yeah. I play soccer. Um, cool. You know, try to try to keep active. I played soccer um, for the club team at Clemson and try yes. to keep that going. Um, 
you know, business leader yes. in the tech community, trying to, to kind of stay connected with the community, and a North Charlestonian, and look, probably most importantly. Yes. If you were to write your state of the city address in 2020, if you were elected, what would be the title of it? North Charleston is moving forward, and we're moving forward together. Hmm. Well, mayoral candidate Ashley Peel, thank you so much for your time. I really, really appreciate it. It's been great. Great first meeting. Thank you so much for having me. Likewise. Yeah. Yes, yes.